Hey guys, and welcome to the channel. In this episode, I will build a sheep static grass applicator. So, you might ask yourself, what is static grass and why do I need an applicator? Static grass consists of plastic fibers that comes in different lengths and also in different colors. But if you sprinkle static grass on a surface, it will most likely just lay flat down on the surface and not look like real grass at all. To make it look like real grass, you need to apply an electric charge that makes the fiber stand up. And that is one of the purposes of the static grass applicator. The other one is to act as a dispenser. So I'm going to use a bug zapper that I bought from a pound shop uh, for 3 euros. And I will also use a tea sieve, that is something that I bought from Ikea for 1 euro. And I will use an empty vitamin jar, and that was for free, because we all eat our vitamins and minerals, don't we? I will also need a crocodile clip and some pliable cables with a silicone mantle. So let's start by disassembling the bug zapper. We will reduce the electronics uh, in the bug zapper and also the handle with the uh, battery compartment. So, let's cut the cables and get rid of the paddle. We will not use that. Let's have a quick look at the electronics. The PCB is secured to the housing with self-threading screws. The design is quite simple. It consists of a transformer and a self-oscillating circuit on the primary side, that is the low voltage battery side. On the secondary side, that is the high voltage side, we have a couple of diodes and filtering capacitors. There is a large polypropylene film capacitor on the output terminals that is rated 2000 volts. I would prefer to have a higher output voltage, because more is better, right? But to be honest, I will probably only use it for smaller dioramas. 2 kilowatts will probably work fine for smaller areas and shorter distances, so I'm fine with that. After putting everything back together, I remove the pieces of cable on the high voltage side. The T-sieve has been spot welded together, so it's easy to take it apart without using any tools. The frame fits perfectly inside the lid. So the only thing I need to do is to make a hole of the right size. So I start hacking away on the inside of the lid, using different types of tools. The plastic is quite hard to work with. But after a while I realized that all that hard work was for nothing. Using a drill press to drill a lot of small holes around the rim is a much more effective way.
I'm knitting in the sides using a half round file. I also need to remove some material from the top of the jar to make room for the thickness of the seal frame. I need to attach the jar to the handle in some kind of way. And to do that I use a piece of clear acrylic sheet. I'll just have to figure out how big it should be. I'm using a handheld jigsaw to cut the acrylic sheet. If you work slowly with a steady hand you can get a really nice result. I measure the posts so I can get the right dimension for the mounting holes. In this case a 5.5mm drill bit will be perfect. I have used a Dremel to cut some indentations in the sides for the cables. The cables have a cross section area of 1.5mm. It's a soft multi-stranded cable. This type of cable is often used in laboratory cables or in RC Auto applications. I attach the red wire to the negative side and the black wire to the positive side, which may seem a little bit the wrong way around. But I want to have the red wire for the hot side and the black wire for the side that is connected to the base using the crocodile clip. And it's finally time to start putting everything back together. Attaching the jar to the handle was a bit tricky, but I managed to get everything together with a couple of M3 screws, nuts, and some finger spitzing if you of course.
I attach the other side of the red cable to the sieve mesh by soldering, but first I prepare the surfaces with some soldering flux. So it's time to put everything back together and make a smoke test. It seems to work fine. Let's see if I can produce a light dark. So let's test this on a piece of plywood. I start by preparing the surface with some PVA glue. I'm loading the dispenser with citadel scorched grass. The fibers are very short, approximately 2 mm. I attach a needle to the base so I get a good electrical contact. After that I attach the black wire with a crocodile clip to the needle. I press the button to activate the electric charge. The electric charge will produce static electricity that will raise the static grass when it hits the surface. I'm happy with that, it seems to work. Next, let's try some longer fibers to see what result we get with that. Awesome, that seems to work fine too. I'll admit that the end result would probably look a little bit better if I have painted the surface green before I applied the, uh, the glue. But I'm very pleased with the result anyway. So I can really recommend building your own static grass applicator. It took a couple of hours only and uh, it costed me something like 5 euros. One word of advice though. This is a high voltage device, so uh, please be careful when you use it. I will use it for an ongoing project, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching, 
and hope this video has been useful for you.